بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وآله وصحبه ومن ولا أما بعد السلام عليكم brothers and sisters uh, جزاكم الله خير for taking time to join this uh, session so today inshallah we are going to look at one ayat from the Quran just one okay so the ayat is from surah 27 surah nahl ayat number 18 where allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says bismillah rahman rahim hatta idha ataw ala wadin namli qalat namlut ya ayyuhan namlu dkhulu masakinakum udkhulu masakinakum la yahtimannakum sulayman wa junudu wa hum la yashurun so there is just only one ayah the translation reads it's a rough translation again um, so and when they came to the valley of the ants one ant said how many ants just one one ant said ants go into your homes in case Suleiman and his armies unknowingly crush all of you now this is something very profound you know why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in surah 40 ayat number 78 you can uh, go and refer to your translations that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has narrated stories of some of the prophets and for the many of the prophets, he has not narrated the stories. So can anybody tell me how many prophets are mentioned in the Quran? Any, any, can anyone tell me how many prophets? 25. Yeah, Jasakumullah khair, 25 prophets. But we know that there were definitely, you know, the prophets were in hundreds in numbers, alayhi salatu salam, right? So the thing is, only 25 have been mentioned. Okay, so you can understand that. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentions about an ant so much so, a surah is named after an ant. I want you to think about this. This is very significant. So this is not a human book, right? It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is speaking. So he mentions an ant and a surah is named after an ant, surah namul. Okay. And what does he say? He's not talking about ants. He's Allah Rabbul Alameen is mentioning the speech of an ant. The ant spoke. And Allah mentions it in the Quran. And it is going to be there till the day of judgment. So you can imagine the significance. So I want you okay. to understand this. So there is one thing that we speak about a particular thing where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about a camel or, or gives an example of a mosquito. That's a different thing. Here Allah is not speaking about an ant. Rather, he is mentioning a speech of an ant. I want you to think about it. An ant spoke. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the speech of an ant. Wow, how significant is it? Allah gives you reward for reciting the speech of an ant. We just recite, right? What am I doing? If I, what I recited, I recited the, what the ant spoke. For reciting that, Allah gives me reward. And the Prophet sallallahu said, we all know this hadith. Every letter in the Quran gives you how many rewards? Every letter. When you recite every letter. When you say Alif, La, Mim, Alif has got how many rewards? 10 rewards, right? So, going by that, approximately we have 50 words. You know, uh, I mean, approximately, right? You know, you do a, a proper calculation. It will not be less than 50. It might be one or two here and there, right? More. So, approximately we are getting 500 rewards. That's the bare minimum. You just recite whatever the ant said and you get 500 rewards. So, that is the significance. And I am sure that, you know, in our houses uh, where we work, there are ants. I mean, correct? Wherever you go, you will find ants. In your house, you go and see, there are ants. But have you ever, you know, have, have you ever been amazed by an ant? Can anybody tell me, you know, you looked at an ant and you say, wow, mashallah, what an ant, right? Uh, you know, has it ever occurred to you like that? Has anybody here been amazed by an ant? Because you see them, right? You see them every day. No, right? We, we, don't, we don't get amazed by an ant. For us, it is very insignificant. But I believe, inshallah, after this session, the way you would look at ant will be completely different. Inshallah. Okay? All right. This ant that Allah speaks about is a role model for us. Okay? So I want everybody to focus here. Next 20 minutes, please, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, please focus, give your undivided attention. Muhammad Abdara Abrar Bhai had raised his hand. Uh, does he need anything? Okay, I think it was by mistake. Okay. 
yeah so the next uh, 20 minutes please give your undivided attention it's very 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 important okay so let's get started so let's look at the actions of the ant that 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 the speech that allah rabbul alamin he paraphrase right in the quran so it is so significant there is so much that we can learn that we are going to look about it right now first thing first action of the ant is it perceived and it recognized the danger for its community can you see that so everybody gets the context right sulaiman alaihi salam and his armies not his army plural and his armies junuduhu his armies it's not like human beings right in, if you read the previous ayah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says he has got armies from the birds from the humans from the jinn subhanallah so you can imagine human army only is so big the jinns also added to it right on top of it we have birds so you know it's like uh, you know it's an army uh, uh, rather it, it, these are armies that the human kind has never seen in the history of human kind this is a unique type of armies so this armies is marching and imagine you know how significant it is so the one ant it perceived and recognized the danger to its community right this is the first thing number 2 after recognizing and perceiving the danger what did it do it did not sit and uh, sit and keep quiet it did not say okay let's see what happens you know let me go and hide into my house who cares what happens to the others no let me go to some other place hijra the ant did not make hijra so what did the ant do the ant hurried to respond he took an initiative you know nobody came and told the ant 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 you saw something please go and tell the community no by itself it hurried to respond it took the initiative okay so why do you think it took that initiative can anybody tell me what do you think would have made the ant take that initiative why would the ant do that it could have made hijra right it could have escaped to some other place or it could have you know just kept quiet concern concern for the community saka law khair it is a concern for the fellow ants it was not selfish okay it was not selfish okay so it hurried to respond and it took initiative what did it do what was the initiative it called the other ants right it is like almost gave a speech public speech here okay it called the other ants and it's not a normal call okay i want you to look at this uh, you know the phrasing allah rabbul alamin subhanallah the precision la ilaha illallah is unbelievable So Allah Rabbi Alamin says, "What is the answer? Call it Namul Tui Ya Ayuhan Namul." So it is not Ya Namul in Arabic. This is a huge significance. I want you to focus here because we read this Ya Ayuhan Lavi Namul, right? It makes no difference for us. There is a difference between Ya Ayuhan Namul and Ya Namul. Ya Namul is just calling O oh, ants. Ya Ayuhan Namul. You see that Ayuhan, right? It's called as How Tambi. How Tambi is to get your attention. I'll give a simple example. you are busy in your work you are busy in your work okay somebody is calling you by your name you may respond you may not respond correct somebody is calling you by your name you are very busy right? you might say okay you know i will respond later you will say ha ah, ah, ha ah, i'll come i'll come but you get a fire alarm you are very busy immediately there is a fire alarm what will you do will you say ha ah, ah, ha let me respond or will you immediately get up and say why is the fire alarm there is a difference right the fire alarm is something that is you know that gets your attention says that something is very serious something is very important the same thing here when when allah rabbul alamin says ya ayyuhal ladina amanu it is not just calling oh believers that's how we translate right oh believers no 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 allah wants to gather you know, get your attention capture our attention it is so important it is something like a fire alarm so whatever busy work you are in you have to immediately put it down and you have to immediately shift your focus to what allah rabbul alamin says the same way here the ant did not say ya namul it said ya ayuhan namul which means it gathered the attention it captured the attention and it communicated to all the other ants this is something serious so i am not here to talk about you know something very simple so something very serious and very important so please please listen to me right so it alerted all the other ants okay right this is number 4 number 5 it conveyed the news it alerted right it alerted so what was the alert it conveyed the news 
what is the news what did it convey what is the important news that it conveyed yes brothers sorry the army is coming they will uh, temple you ah the army is coming so the yeah. army is coming they will destroy you uh, you know uh, because uh, uh, right. army will not perceive the yes. ants right yes the army will not obviously you know it's not armies right and it's not human beings right yes armies of different kinds they are marching so obviously you know <laughs> you know what is an ant right so i need not tell you so it's going to be a catastrophe for the ants right so it conveyed the news okay oops oh i'm sorry yeah okay so number 6 this is number 5 right they are still in the actions of the ant only huh? they are only looking at that speech of the ant huh? so i hope that you are still with me focus so what did it do it did not just convey the news it made it very clear with accurate information so what do i mean by made it clear with accurate information he did not say some armies are coming some people are coming it said sulaiman and his armies subhanallah so amazing right you know if you read the next aya sulaiman alaihi salam actually he, you know he couldn't control his laughter he actually laughed patabassama laikatan min qawliha la ilaha illallah so patabassama is also laughing laikatan is also laughing first is like you know laugh comes but you control it laikatan is he couldn't control his laugh right after hearing it because the ant so intelligent he did not say some people are coming it said sulaiman alaihi salam is coming and his armies are coming look at the precision right subhanallah so he knew that he knew sulaiman alaihi salam he knew the armies are coming so it gave an accurate and information and it made it very clear right which means that the other ants also knew about sulaiman alaihi salam obviously only then you can say right if i come and tell you uh, some hitra cartoons is coming so you like what 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 did you say right because you don't know what you don't know what i just told you so you must know what i'm talking about so when the are when the ant told the other ants sulaiman alaihi salam and his armies which means that the other ants also knew about him and his armies right so immediately the moment they know sulaiman alaihi salam and his armies they would have immediately perceived the danger correct so that is why the ant it made a very clear made it very clear and it gave an accurate information about the uh, situation okay right this is number 6 number 7 it gave a command ta'muruna bil ma'ruf right we say that it commanded good what did the command what was the command it said he did not give the news he did not say the sulaiman alaihi salam and his armies came and uh, armies are coming they will trample you and he did not stop there it actually gave an action item also you tell what you should do it said khudukhulu udkhulu masakinakum enter your dwellings and dwellings is not this like you know what you call uh, in the normal house masakin is where you are feeling safe it comes from the word sakina where you feel tranquil Uh, where you are at peace right so you enter into your dwellings where you can feel safe and where you are at peace so it gave an action item also it commanded them number 7 okay number 8 it advised them it was not a command like a command when you say commanding commanding is not like the military commander it is more of a nasiha it was more of an advice which is in form of a command which is in form of an action item right so there is a nasiha here there is an advice here number 9 it prevented a danger what danger did it prevent it prevented the danger of the other ants getting trampled getting crushed okay number 10 it gave a warning there's a warning right clear warning to all the ants they are coming if you don't go inside they will cr- crush you unknowingly they will crush you so it's a clear warning okay and number 11 it gave an emphasis so what do i mean by this emphasis If you look at the Arabic word, it says "la yahti manakum." La yahti manakum. The yahti manakum is actually a verb. It's a fact. For students of Arabic, you know that it the the verb actually ends with noon as sakila. You see the noon at the end, yahti man. Right? They do gunna also here when they recite the Quran because there is an emphasis there. Yahti man. What is that man? Right? That noon is right. It's to add emphasis. and a very strong emphasis right it is to say surely 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 you will be crushed okay so the you know he didn't just say that you will be crushed he said surely surely you don't listen to me you're gone completely gone you know they're going to crush you completely so that's how serious it is 
Now, by the way, I want to take a tangent here to talk about this word, Yehti Manna. Is everybody listening? This is very important. This, uh, no, this root letter of the word Hatama is actually appears in a, another surah, which we frequently recite, which is surah Humaza, surah number 104, which talks about gossiping, right? Uh, I'm sure that many of you have this surah by heart. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Kalla la yumbadhanna fil khutama, wa ma adura kamal khutama, right? Allah, 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 Rabbul Alameen, will say that he will be hurled, he will be thrown into a hutama. And Allah will ask, what, what, what do you know about hutama? So this is very important. Same word, huh? crushing, hutama. It comes from, the, it means crushing. I want, this is where I want you to focus here. Although it's a tangent, but I thought, you know, it's very important to make you people understand. What is hutama? Wama darakama hutama? Nar. It is a fire. I want you to think about it. Will fire crush you or burn you? Think about it. What will fire do, brothers? Fire will burn, right? Have you ever heard about this phrase, uh, phrase uh, the, fire, the, the man died because he was crushed by fire? No. We normally say burning, but Allah SWT says, no, this fire, forget about burning, it will crush you. SubhanAllah, what will actually crush? Something that is heavy will crush. So the fire, when we think about hellfire, we think it's fire like, you know, what we see in the world. No. Unfortunately, we have not understood, many of us have not understood what the hellfire is. So, inshallah, if Allah wills, we will discuss the description of the hellfires in the Quran. We, we have not understood. But because everything is translated fire, 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 we think it is like this fire. No. Each fire has got its own attribute, has got its own quality. And this is very serious. If you actually understand the description of hellfire, and if somebody really firmly believes in Akhra, they will have lots of sleepless nights. So, imagine this fire is not burning. It will burn and it will also crush you. So I want you to imagine what kind of a fire is this. It is not this normal fire. Right? Normal fire is actually, no, there is no weight to it. It will not crush you. But this fire is so heavy, Allah alone knows you know, how it will look like. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from the hellfire. I mean, Arab al mean. And the warning is, this is for the people who are gossiping. Right? One who gossips, one who slanders, one who defames others. This is the punishment for those people, right? I want you to keep this in mind next time when the thought of gossip comes to you, so you can immediately remember this ayah and you can keep quiet or move away from that place or give a warning to the person who is engaged in gossip, inshallah. Ta'ala. Okay, that was just a tangent because I thought this was so significant. I wanted to bring your attention to it. Okay, now let's go back, right? So the and actually emphasis, right? So can you see this? 11 things from the speech of the ant. By the way, I've taken only things that are relevant for Dawa. There are other things which I can speak about, which you know, I think uh, for the current uh, situation that we are in and for the Dawa situation, I mean, they may not be directly relevant, so I'm not mentioning them. But in fact, there are more, right? Have you ever thought about this? How significant it is? 11 things, subhanAllah, uh, from the speech of the ant. That is from whatever, uh, you know, this is from a scholar, from an Iraqi scholar called uh, Dr. Fadila Samirai. May Allah Rabbul Alameen preserve him. Uh, he's a treasure, alhamdulillah. Right? So you know, from his uh, in a study, this is what he had gathered. He had gathered more also, but only 11 things relevant to da'wah. Only Allah alone knows how many other things we can derive from this. From a speech of an ant. Okay? Just unbelievable. Okay. Now, this is where the real thing is. Let's go. It's a, ant is a role model, right? So now let's compare the ant and us. Right, where we stand. First of all, do we recognize the danger? That's the first question. The ant recognize the danger. Do we recognize the danger? That's the first question. Many of us, we physically live in India, but mentally we live in Saudi. Right, the way we dress, the way we think, the way we act, we are in Saudi. That's a serious problem. If you are in India, physically in India, you have to be mentally in India. You need to know what is happening. You cannot act as if you are in Saudi. The Saudi is a different environment altogether. Right? So Amir Bhai is raising his hand. Yes, Amir Bhai. Okay, I think that was by mistake. I don't know. All right. Yeah. So do we recognize the danger? So this is the first question. Right? Uh, there are many people who still think there is no danger. <laughs> That's another thing. Is there danger? Kya Kya danger? How Jay Shivajinarko, they will say, come to Shivajinar, everything is hunky dory. 
what is there nothing nothing to worry alhamdulillah right so first thing is do we recognize the danger ask this question right second thing is yeah many of us alhamdulillah we recognize the danger at least i can talk about this group i know many of them personally so i can tell you that yes they recognize the danger this is the next question what did the ant do after recognize the danger it did not make hijra right it actually responded and it took an initiative so are we doing anything or just sitting quiet or are we just you know securing ourselves right how can i secure myself and my family where to which country can i run right that's uh, that is the attitude of many people here right you know uh, I, i don't want to take names but you know during the caa nrc came many people had actually you know they were talash me the right very seriously looking out you know where they can run and settle so something like that happens right so are we like that okay number 3 do we respond and take initiative this is a question so these are all questions na now don't think you know just questions on the slide you should ask yourself i should ask myself right what is the answer do we recognize the danger it's all you know close ended questions the answer should be yes or no right so you should give an answer right to this question do i recognize the danger yes or no do we respond or take do i respond or take initiative yes or no like that okay okay i take initiative what is that initiative do i alert others do we go and tell other people what it is okay what is the situation right what did the ant do it brought the it brought uh, uh, you know it gathered all the ants and brought uh, the brought them to the attention or it got their attention brought their attention to this major major thing that is going to happen right so are we doing that number 4 do we convey the information in a clear manner this is very important this is why i told you right when the ant said he did not say some people are coming right i i see lot of crowd he said sulaiman and his army so that all the ants can understand what will be the consequence because it's not an armies you know the armies are not like any other so similarly when you are conveying you are saying danger bye you know uh, you know please wake up please wake up oh, not good enough many people don't understand so you have to make it very clear very clear what will happen if you don't wake up today what will happen 10 years from now what can happen 20 years from now what will happen to your kids will your kids be even muslims right these are the questions that we should ask and we should make it very clear right convey the information in a very clear manner next is do we command good advise others and prevent evil the ant did all this it commanded good right it gave an action item so it asked the other ants to go inside the dwellings it advised others so do we advise others and do we prevent an evil because many of us we recognize the danger we know that so are we doing anything to prevent the evil and last but not the least do we warn others right we do all this but there's a warning also right as much as advice is required there should be a warning because our, uh, people don't understand the consequences they may or may not you know wake up so do we want others so this is something that uh, we have to really think about and you know these are some of the things that we can learn from the ant so next i wanted to end my uh, reminder with a hadith very profound hadith and i want you to think about it the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said allah will question a slave on the day of judgment okay so allah will question a slave on the day of judgment and be, there will be a lot of questions so one of the question will be until he says what kept you from stopping evil when you saw it so allah will ask you saw evil but what kept you from stopping it so the hadith says the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said when allah grants a slave an opportunity to reply so allah will give you an opportunity to reply it's not just questioning allah will say it's you know allah is expecting an answer you have to give a response to allah subhanahu wa taala so the man will say oh rab i hope you will not question me about this subhanallah look at this exactly our mindset the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam sadaqa rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam the sallallahu alaihi wasallam said the truth he captured the mindset oh rab i hope you will not question me about this i thought you know i will not be questioned about this right i i just you know keep quiet or i run away to somewhere i thought you know it would be fine for me. that is one thing and another thing why did i keep quiet and why did i run away because i feared the people subhanallah this is exactly the mindset right why people don't you know oh if i Uh, if i you know say this what will happen there might be something there might be this there might be that right yeah so you can see this this is exactly the mindset of many people why they don't want to open the mouth and in fact there is no danger at all by the way right there absolutely no reason to fear the people because 
we are not doing anything uh, illegal here we are not doing anything against the constitution nothing at all non muslims they open their mouth and they speak right and you, you know, we cannot even do that i mean i don't know you know in which category you know allah will put us and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us and guide us i mean arabul alamin but this is a very serious thing i want you to think about this this is definitely a question it's there in sahih ibn maja classified as sahih by imam albaniya yeah? very sahih hadith so i'm not pulling some weak hadith and all that right all 100% authentic sahih right you can go and check if you want arabic reference i'll give you go and check with any scholar you want no problem at all inshallah right so this is a question and i want you to think about it close your eyes and think about it for a moment allah asks this question and what will you do and what will happen to the person that is something the hadith doesn't say which means it's even more scary because the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam did not say if allah will forgive him or he will throw him in hell fire we don't know we really don't know subhanallah so there is lot of ambiguity here on the result right it's a very very scary thing right so subhanallah you know let's wake up and uh, one brother actually ping me chat and he's saying that, that the aya remains uh, about the first public address of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam right when the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he ascended the safa mountain and he shouted yes yeah you know my companions if i told you that you know there will be attack uh, from the behind the valley will you believe me and they said yes and i said you know yeah just a couple of hours brother yeah very much right so you can see this is very serious uh, so i will end with this that i hope that you know you benefited from this uh, so if you have any questions i can quickly take then you can move on to the next one any questions brothers okay no questions uh, then just a couple of hours so i request bilal bhai to share something on whatsapp status so you wanted to share something uh, whatsapp status is something that uh, is a, one of the several opportunities where we can communicate some message so i request bilal bhai to share so i'll stop sharing and uh, bilal bhai you can uh, go ahead inshallah 